Hey, dear ones, God bless you. Thanks a lot for tuning in. I have a reflection for you that I'm entitling The Miracle of Ordination. I love to talk about the Holy Priesthood, to teach about it, because it is such a gift of love from Jesus to his people. It's called by Father Zacharias, uh, the wonderful elder at the Holy Monastery of St. John the Baptist, uh, where St. Sophronia is. In Essex, Father Zacharias calls the priesthood the supra-celestial grace of the priesthood. This is how he describes priesthood, a supra-celestial grace. What a word. The greatest gift of God on the earth uh, is the priesthood. Ordination is a mystery, one of the holy mysteries, one of the sacred sacraments. And I think it's important for us to understand the miracle that is accomplished by the grace of God in ordination. Ordination is not uh, talked about just here or there uh, in the pages of the New Testament. Priesthood is front and center. The laying on of hands, uh, ordination, sacred ordination is found uh, all throughout the New Testament. I'd like to focus, though, on what exactly happens to the man when the bishop lays his hands on him and he becomes a priest. What is the miracle that takes place there? St. John Chrysostom says that there is no greater grace on the earth than the grace of the priesthood. And it, it's called, ordination is called a number of different things in the New Testament and in the writings of the fathers. I'd like to read you just a few of them. Uh, it's called consecration, kathierosis. It's called sacramental perfection, teleosorgia. Priestly perfection, hierotiki teleosis. The laying on of hands, hierotinia, sometimes hierotesia. It is the foundation of all the holy mysteries. Baptism, chrismation, Eucharist, uh, confession, uh, the healing of the sick, uh, uh, marriage, all, funerals. All of these are rooted and based upon the fundamental sacrament of the priesthood. Without priesthood, you have none of those mysteries. They all rest upon the foundation stone of the priesthood, which is why St. Paul describes uh, the, the role of the apostles and their successors as stewards of the mysteries of God. I love that. That's from 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. Paul says you should consider us as stewards of the mysteries of God. This is front and center in the role of a priest is to... Uh, since he doesn't own the mysteries, right? He, he's not more than a steward, he's, but he's not less than a steward. He's the one who, by his priesthood and by his commission from the church, uh, administers the mysteries to unite men and God and to nourish salvation for the next life. What exactly changes uh, in baptism? Of course, I could do a reflection today on what doesn't change. Uh, a man doesn't go from having uh, dark hair to having white hair. <laughs> that happens through the pastorate. <laughs> oh, we could talk about that. Yes, we could. But his, his physicality doesn't change, right? He was a man with a body, uh, a soul, a mind before he was ordained. And he's a man with a body and a soul and a mind after he's ordained. So we could talk about what doesn't change, but I want to focus on what does change. Because a great miracle takes place in ordination. A man goes from being a uh, part of the flock to no longer being a part of the flock, but being a shepherd of the flock. He goes from being a part of the public uh, to being um, a man who now is ecclesial. He's not any longer uh, a person, uh, a, a secular person, right? A biotikos. He's not that anymore. He is someone who is um, ecclesial. He becomes a, a Catholic person, so to speak. That's the uh, understanding of it. The great uh, St. Gregory of Nyssa, in his treatise on holy baptism, describes the nature of the change of ordination in a very beautiful way, and I want to read it to you for your encouragement. He says, the power of the word, capital W, of Christ, the power of the word makes the priest sober and honorable setting him apart from the community as a whole by the newness of the blessing. For yesterday and the day before, he was one of the men, one of the public. 
But suddenly he has proved to be a leader, a president, proistos. As a side note, that is what a priest is. That is not a good title for the chairman of a parish council, a lay person who is elected to an office in the in the council. There's, there's some Orthodox jurisdictions in America that use that name president for the chief of the parish council. That's a theological word, word and it's a very important word. It's a priestly word. Proistos, the priest, is, the pastor who is a priest, is the proistos of every organization in a parish, including the parish council. Parish council is not above a priest. That is some crazy ecclesiology, if anyone thinks that. No. St. Gregory says the priest, by virtue of ordination, becomes proistos, a teacher of piety, an initiator into secret mysteries. And he does these things not changed in his appearance or in a bodily sense, but remaining outwardly what he was, he is transformed in his invisible soul by an invisible power and grace and is improved. What a beautiful word from St. Gregory of Nyssa about the miracle of ordination, the change of a priest. This is how a man, a Christian man, goes from being a member of the flock to being a man of God. He's a man of the church by virtue of his baptism. He becomes a set-apart man of God. This is the language that St. Paul uses for his spiritual son, Timothy, in 1 Timothy chapter 6. He becomes a man of God, such that he is a representative of God. The priest becomes a spirit-bearer, commissioned to bless and sanctify the people. This is why at the end of the liturgy it's prescribed that we sing, Preserve, O God, Him who blesses and sanctifies us unto the ages. Amen. This is what a priest does. He carries the blessing of Christ to share. He carries the holiness of the mysteries to impart and sanctify the people. His hand brings the great consolation of the forgiveness of sins. He brings us into union with Christ in baptism. He communicates the Holy Spirit to us in chrismation. He nourishes us with the glorified flesh and blood of Christ in the Holy Eucharist. He closes our eyes and prays our soul uh, and assists our soul in its journey to paradise at our funeral. This is the miracle of being a priest. We become in the priesthood ambassadors of Christ, right? This is a beautiful reference to 2 Timothy 5.20. An ambassador represents in an official capacity uh, the president, in this case, the king of kings. He sends his priests and his bishops to be his ambassadors. This is the role of priest, to speak for God and to represent God. And he is a steward of the holy mysteries. This is a, a, a description of the miracle of ordination. And hearing that, I ask you, do you have a priest? Do you have a priest in your life? If you don't, go get one. Go get one. If you do have a priest in your life, are you relating to him properly? Are you hung up on his human deficiencies? Those aren't eradicated by priesthood. They aren't eradicated. But that does not steal what he is. So relate properly in your mind by faith to your priest who Christ has sent to help you and to help you walk the road that's narrow unto eternal life. It's a gift from God to you, dear ones, your priest. And the supra-celestial grace of the priesthood is a tremendous help and consolation for our journey to the next life. I'll close with the beautiful word from St. Nikolai Vilimirovich, who labored here in America and fell asleep in the Lord in 1956. He says this, Blessed is the priest who knows what a treasure he has become. Blessed is the priest who knows what a treasure he has become. God be with you. Patristic Nectar Publications is pleased to announce a new conference entitled The Sacred Arts, Preaching the Gospel Without Words with lectures given by Father Maximos Konstas and Jonathan Pajot. From Friday, March 29th to Sunday, March 31st, conference topics will include The Origin of Sacred Art, How Iconography Preaches the Gospel, How to Read an Icon, 
how architecture preaches the gospel, how music preaches the gospel, and a sermon by Father Maximus. We hope you will join us for opportunities to pray, meet our speakers, attend a young adult social hour, and network with like-minded individuals. A $60 registration fee includes an in-person seat, access to a live stream which can be viewed from anywhere, and the conference recordings. To register and find more information, please visit conference.patristicnectar.org.